Hi, this is Nancy Buswell from MissBuswell.com, and you are listening to the Listen and Repeat podcast, episode 37. This episode is titled, Sailing Alone Around the World. (laughs) Doesn't that sound interesting? Now, this is not a novel. This is a, a true story. The writer is Joshua Slocum, and he was the first person to sail alone around the world. And uh, he wrote this lovely, this lovely book about it. I first found this on LibriVox.org. It's a, a website where you can download audio from books and other things that are in the public domain. In the public domain means they are so old that they don't have a copyright anymore. Listen and repeat try to copy how my voice goes up and down. That means uh, improve your intonation by copying after me. So here we go. In the fair land of Nova Scotia, which is in Canada, eastern Canada, a maritime province, there is a ridge called North Mountain overlooking the Bay of Fundy on one side and the fertile Annapolis Valley on the other. On the northern slope of the range grows the hardy spruce tree. well adapted for ship timbers, of which many vessels of all classes have been built. The people of this coast, hardy, robust, and strong, are disposed to compete in the world's commerce And it is nothing against the master mariner if the birthplace mentioned on his certificate be Nova Scotia. I was born in a cold spot on coldest North Mountain. on a cold February 20th. Though I am a citizen of the United States, a naturalized Yankee, if it may be said that Nova Scotians are not Yankees in the truest sense of the word, Sorry, that was a little too long. A naturalized Yankee. And, yeah, I said that too long just because I was thinking of the word Yankee. Here, uh, Yankee mean is a Canadian calling an American a Yankee. But you have to be very careful with the word Yankee. I think I've told you that um, before, but a long time ago. I don't remember in which podcast. But uh, where I come from, the American South, Yankee means someone from the North. So if you call me a Yankee, oh, I'll be angry. (laughs) No, not really. Well, some people would because uh, the Civil War, you know, uh, was it two weeks ago? I did uh, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. That was said during the Civil War, the North against the South, the Yankees against the rebels. So if you know someone from the U.S., be very, very careful about calling them a Yank or a Yankee. Because if it's someone from the South, like me, we, we may have a reaction that you don't expect. That means we may be a little angry, because I'm not a Yankee. A Yankee is someone from the North. I'm a Southerner. But I know that in Canada, they consider Yankees to be anyone from the U.S. However, in the U.S., a Yankee is someone from the North. So, let's go on. 
if it may be said that Nova Scotians are not Yankees in the truest sense of the word. On both sides, my family were sailors. And if any slocum should be found not seafaring, he will show at least an inclination to whittle models of boats and contemplate voyages. My father was the sort of man who, if wrecked on a desolate island, would find his way home if he had a jackknife and could find a tree. <laughs> He was a good judge of a boat, but the old clay farm, which some calamity made his, was an anchor to him. He was not afraid of a cap full of wind. and he never took a back seat at a camp meeting or a good old-fashioned revival. As for myself, the wonderful sea charmed me from the first. At the age of eight, I had already been afloat along with other boys on the bay, with chances greatly in favor of being drowned. When I was a lad, I filled the important post of cook on a, fish on a fishing schooner. But I was not long in the galley. for the crew mutinied at the, appearance, at the appearance of my first duff. I don't know the word duff, but it, sound, it, it obviously means his first meal. And chucked me out before I had a chance to shine as a culinary artist. The next step toward the goal of happiness found me before the mast in a full-rigged ship bound on a foreign voyage. Thus I came over the bows and not in through the cabin windows to the command of a ship. And then he tells about other ships that he was the captain of, and then later how he restored uh, a very old, um, an old, uh, small, very small ship. And, uh, took it around the world. It's really quite an interesting story. So thank you for listening. I hope you found this useful and I hope you have a good day.